welcome. So, hello everybody, welcome, Dante here. I'm here with Michael and some other people to introduce this topic of the Abundance and Money workshop series that we are launching now um, to start maybe in a month or a couple weeks. We don't have the exact dates yet. It's all kind of popping up organically as this project is really hitting the ground running to let people experience a shift in their mindset about money and tap into what the Pleiadian Council talks so much about, which is their own passion and recognize that the purpose of this passion is to help them meet all of their needs. And money is the most amazing tool we have to be able to literally manifest anything. Um, and nonetheless, there's a very both hierarchical system and uh, oppressive system that is in place right now in terms of finances and government, corporation control. And without going too much into that, we talk about how to include that with your worldview of money because there's a lot of extremism out there right now in this spiritual community, um, conscious community, where there's on one hand, these wealth gurus who um, kind of disguise very capitalistic, consumeristic tactics that in many ways cut people off from that heart level compassion in order to maximize their profits. While there's the other hand of the people who see all of this kind of dark programming that's out there, and they, um, because of that, they hate money. They don't want anything to do with money. And they feel guilt and shame for thinking of, well, how do I make more money? Or how do I turn my gifts into money? Or how do I um, actually put myself out there in a way that I can thrive and actually love money? So this is a program to shatter those beliefs. And it's a program that's in many senses led by the Pleiadian Council as they delivered this information that definitely changed the way that Michael and I saw things in our own journeys going through it. Um, Cause a lot of different keys unlock in the, through these materials. And it's also um, an interactive space where we're going to be guiding you through how these materials might help you shift some of your belief systems and implement new strategies and how you live your life so that you can bring that money in. Um, and so there will be this, there will, there's six recordings. It's about six hours that are pre-recorded that you will have access to and you will get both the audio of and the transcripts from them. And along with them, there's gonna be some additional audios that are meditations and tools to clear some of the beliefs and implement these strategies. And then there's going to be the, we're saying four now, four to six. Um, I think it's kind of open depending on who signs up and how willing they are to commit. So four to six weeks of live calls where we dive deep with you with your beliefs and your experiences in life and help you to break some of these patterns. And so that's partially with us and partially with the Pleiadian Council. And then you'll have also lifetime access to those recordings as well. And what's really exciting about these materials is that it is from this sort of this multidimensional perspective. So one concept that we wanted to look at when we dove in is like, well, what is money? Where did it come from? And where is it going? Because it's not a static thing. And we get very sucked into this old idea of like, well, money is this thing connected with all of this blah, blah, blah. But then in the future, we're moving into a world where a lot of the old jobs aren't going to exist because of artificial intelligence and because of the way society is changing. And some people have fear about this, but what this actually means is that there's going to be a need to find new ways of redistributing resources. And so the Palladians talk about how many of these shifts in the world are going to take place. And key to this is universal basic income, but there's a lot more to that. But then it brings us to see this mindset, well, in the new world, money works by everybody just has enough of it because it is distributed. And every those who are able to offer more through their passion to the world, receive more money. 
And despite that, nobody has less. And this new way of seeing things, well, just do what I love to do because my needs are already taken care of. Um, if we can live as if that's already the truth, then new opportunities really open up for us in amazing ways. So maybe I should sell yeah, my can, can I just can, yeah, can yeah. I just add something to that, Danzig? Because one yeah. of the things that, that blew me away, uh, which was, I think it was in the first uh, session <clears throat> we did with them, was exactly what you just outlined of how the future is going to work, that everybody is going to, every single day, uh, get a small amount, um, if they choose to, with the universal basic income. And so what, what that will do, that everybody will have their covers, uh, have, to have their need covers, is that it will remove the fear that prevents a lot of people from investing in what they are passionate about and and donating slash investing in people whose art and whose passion that they really resonate with and want to support because they want to see more of that uh, both personally but also on a global level like just like i mentioned a, a bunch of times that's also why we're here is that i want to support you and i want to get you and, and the pleadian message out there uh, and i'm very excited about that and then what they said about that um, that passion is the currency of the future. I thought that was so cool. And that's it, it's interesting. And this is also one of the things that's blown me away about doing this is that some of the things I've talked about for a couple of years, for example, I haven't uh, said it as eloquently as they did, but I've said to people, listen, with AI coming up, you, you better focus in on what you're good at and passionate about because it if you have any type of success in the future and AI can copy it, um, there, there's going to be people like literally with the push of a button that can copy any type of website, any type of, uh, of recording, even art and what have you, or copy it very, very, uh, I mean, very thoroughly and, and getting very close to the original product is that all that's left is that passion um, and who you are and your imperfect uh you know, uh, soul as we all are on a, a journey that's that's very exciting, and all of it is part of, of all that is, and that's also one of the things that that they said that I think is so crucial is that we all have innate value, um, and we need to tap into that. And the more that we tap into our own passions, is that that I mean that that's what we wanted by coming here, and that's that's the intention of of source and all that is. So. It's truly on all levels a win, 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 win when we do tap into our passion. And the fact that they even said that it's the currency of the future, I'm like, yes. <laughs> I mean, I can't wait for that to, to be a, a, a thing that most people know. And like you said uh, just before, is, is we have the opportunity now to live as, as if that's already a thing. Um, so that's our vote to... Um, tap into that uh, parallel universe where that's uh, already happening. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that that the whole thing about uh, passion as the currency of the future that was such an uh, both eye opener but also uh, an affirmation of what I was already uh, believing. Yeah, yeah. And another really powerful idea that stuck with me and will stick with a lot of people is understanding that you are value um, mm -hmm. and passion is what leads you to own your value and this is something that a lot of people will well our current system kind of confuses us with is this notion that you're not value you know what you have and your assets determine your worth as a person but the Pleiadians invite us to see a complete different shift in this perspective to understand that value is something innate within us and it can't be defined externally it has to do with our ability to be in connection with that higher frequency of passion and when we're able to do that it manifests these representations of that passion around us it ripples out and it creates value so this passion or this unconditional love that they talk about isn't something static that's just for us. It's actually something that creates an energetic resonance. So whenever we're in that state, we're creating a resonance field that brings other people to tune into that state as well. And mm. that experience of being 
in resonance with your higher self through passion, through love, is what is most valuable. And so when we're able to do that, we bring out our innate value that isn't external to us in any way. And this shift in perspective helps us so much to not be hindered by those old definitions of oh well i only have this much so i'm only worth this much or i only have this degree so i'm only worth that much it's no it's like well i love to do this so much so i must be valuable i exist yeah, and therefore I'm valuable yeah that that's a huge insight and that's also one of the things that uh, will we'll hopefully get them to to put into a meditation but also something that i want to put in through a couple of different permission slips really getting that belief in and uh, accentuated with with uh, stories from our own lives and, and realizations of of how we've already uh, been of value to other people and especially like you said how we can do it by you know following the formula basically because we 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 need more people to do it in all in order for all these amazing things that they outlined uh, in order for them to happen and one thing that that really struck with me is that it doesn't matter who you are where you are what you've been through everybody can not only well we already established that everybody have innate value um but everybody can starting like literally right now have a lot of external value too by sharing openly where they are sharing their passion and not pretending to be perfect but sharing the journey that they're on uh, because when you're following the formula and you know you follow your passion um to the best of your ability without insisting on any outcome and and um and staying in a positive mindset is is the fourth one that's sometimes added and and one thing that they don't add specifically as the fifth but they talk about all the time is learning from the experiences that we have and what i've seen work really really well is that those who actually not only learn from their experiences or quote unquote failures and the experiences that up until at some point they have beaten themselves in the head with and has led to you know lesser self esteem and so on and so forth actually looking at the lessons behind those experiences integrating them with passion and be a shining example of what to do um because like pleadians have and other uh, channel beings have said it it's not what happens it's how we react to it and so even though somebody feels totally worthless right now even though somebody has been through failure they don't have any money they i mean everybody hates them or whatever like take the worst case scenario literally in an instant by making that decision to follow the formula and be open about where they are they will not only have the uh, intrinsic value but they will be of tremendous value to other people by being a reflective mirror to where people are or have been so that that's one of the things i i've talked about and i haven't quite unfortunately <laughs> been able to phrased it the way that they did uh, in some of the sessions but i was so pleased that they said exactly some of these same things they just said it much better than i ever could have yeah and i have to say that as well for those watching the video is like i channel because they say it better than i can say it um both in terms of the language they use and the energy they transmit when i'm in that channeling state it's of course something that um a deep part of me knows because these pleiadian beings are another part of my soul they're another incarnation of me and um so yes this information is in me but what we're explaining now is going to be so much clearer in these materials and when we do the channeling sessions um and and writing on that this success versus failure thing is such a distorted notion that we live in that keeps people stuck is that we we think that if we didn't make it you know we attach so much to if this the outcome of this is going to be successful or not but when we understand this formula we know that failure doesn't exist because when we don't meet our own expectations we're being given an opportunity to learn a lesson that's going to help us in continuing to be in this frequency of love and passion and whenever you're in the frequency of love and passion you're successful
you're just that is success that's why you came here mm. right the purpose of incarnating is to be who you are and who you are is this expression of love so if you can feel that love that is success and you know another area where a lot of people get stuck is that maybe they don't feel comfortable asking for what they're worth so i think this is something that's going to show up even more in the course because it isn't as outlined as clearly as it might need to be in these materials yet but you know it might be self-evident right that once you understand your worth you're a lot the next step is to ask for your worth that now you know you're doing what you love and you're feeling the value of it though do you ask for it do you stand for it and you need to have those beliefs set up within yourself that wow like being in my own flow of love is abundance and, and is something that has great value and now that i'm doing it you know i think the world can support me for it and you know when there's a will there's a way um, maybe that's not the best that's the cliche that comes up but um i think a lot of these materials have been something that i've lived just through my intuition and got to know better with time i've made a lot of decisions against crazy odds to do what i love um, emptying my bank account on one-way tickets um, <laughs> many times and if something always works out and part of it was that i was relentless and just doing what i really wanted to do and doing what i love doing and listening to that you know at, at first I, I always defined it in a very spiritual way of like oh this is my spiritual path like taking this trip doing this training doing this thing this is my spiritual path calling me and if i'm in alignment with spirit then it's going to provide and it always does and um so there's this level of trust that happens when we learn to prioritize being in that flow of love above everything else and recognizing that abundance is just the ability to do what we need to do um, and this is something that's included in there a lot as well is that we can fall into this victim consciousness that i'm in lack and i don't have enough um, because we think we need our money to be the sole way that we get to where we're going but when we recognize as long as like i'm very present in this moment and i'm taking care of these next steps i am in abundance and that opens up all of the possibilities of how to let that higher frequency of love guide you to act on your mm. passion in the best way yeah and i think that that's such a beautiful foundation and and also just to give a, a little perspective of how this program uh, came to be and and uh, and and how I got the idea is that I I, I think a, a funny example of of what actually happened is that you know I've been studying spirituality for twenty plus years now as well as marketing and business and you know I have um, I have searched uh, the internet YouTube seminars etc specifically also for how to become more uh, not only abundant but actually money and 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 I actually had the image in my mind of uh, Tom Cruise's character and Jerry Maguire where he goes show me the money show me the money <laughs> and, and sometimes when I was going through channel material like from uh, Bashar or, or even a, a Abraham Hicks I'm like yeah it, abundance is fantastic and I have tapped into that belief, the foundation that you just described that, you know, when we follow the formula, we will have our uh, needs uh, met and, and taken care of. And I was also passionate about the extra income and what that could do. And for example, one of the examples that the Pleiadians uh, used in the last session, uh, the sixth one, was that they said, imagine the scenario where you have a million dollars uh, like in cash and you're walking through a part of, of, uh, of the world where there's a lot of power to you. Um, and imagine the love it would bring to so many people by you just handing out that cash left and right. And I'm like, because I've been very focused, and this is part of what I do personally, on, uh, on my music and singing career and what that can do for people. And, and I also realized, yeah, and if I also have the money to invest in, let's say, other artists who I see 
have the potential, have the spark, have the passion. Or like if I go to a place where people don't have money, I'd love to be the conduit of, of source of bringing um, money to that. And that's something that I totally underestimated the power of giving. And that's also one of the questions I asked them, which has been on my mind for many, many years, is that I found it so fascinating that the most, and, and I'm just going to say as many cliches as I can, the most money grabbing, scrupulous, um, uh, insane business people who have nothing else uh, than their own best interest at heart, <laughs> when when they have used the sort of technique of having what, what's called a giving account, giving 5% or 10% of your income to charity, the weird thing is that they found out that it actually works for them too, even though they don't believe in it. And of course, in the spiritual community, it's very normal. It's called tithing uh, in many places. The thing about um, giving it could be 1%, it could be half percent, it could be 10%, doesn't really matter. Um, that the, the fact that that works for people who are absolutely non-spiritual and people who are the most spiritual, caring, loving people in the world, I, I found that fascinating how they answered what the dynamics is uh, behind that. Because, um, and, and there were other places where uh, I asked uh, about stuff that I've seen from the business world and the marketing world that has worked, but also from my spiritual journeys and spiritual friends I have. And that was one of the things I took into the project that I wanted answers to is that how can these things work for so different people with so different intentions and so different vibrations. And for me, that, that really closed a lot of sort of open loops of things that I've thought about for years is how is this possible? Uh, the other thing that I was also very pleased to, to hear their answer uh, on is that, so we have the formula of, uh, and especially the part about not insisting about any particular outcome. And that works really, really well, as, as we all know and believe in. And then we have in, in the entrepreneurial world, in the personal development industry, a lot of this thing about obsession and focus on one thing and one thing only. And so I also asked them about like, what's the dynamic behind that? And, and, um, and they had some really interesting answers. And, and one of them was that, well, you can use that um, sort of obsession formula, if you will, of focus on one thing, um, but you're probably gonna miss out on the more deeper levels of life and the more holistic things that could happen to you if you follow the formula. But it doesn't mean that you can't focus on one thing. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have goals, et cetera, or have plans and so on and so forth. And, and the way they described how to get the best of both worlds, so to speak, that was one thing that I was after doing this project. And I'm very, very happy that we got some answers that I haven't heard before. Yeah. I want to open up to their questions in a moment, but reflecting on that is like opening to understand that the love frequency passion that we talk about is a holistic thing. And I think there's, some people will often get confused with it even after some time of hearing this message that they think they need to find that one thing that they're so excited about more than mm. anything else that is not in the here and now but it's actually in the here and now so a lot of the model that we're given for success is to find your calling to imagine what you're supposed to do years from now and go and build it but this is often not holistic or honoring the being it's in the moment whatever lifts and elevates your frequency is going to lead you to the next best scenario that continues to lift your frequency um, and so i've seen a lot of people who are in some sort of entrepreneurial role go into total burnout because they don't understand mm. the holistic nature of reality in this deep way that their cup has to be so completely full in order for their passion to be complete and to be as magnetic as it can be. And I've had this experience sometimes where like, um, after, you know, doing so much work and blah, 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 that I just take a time to rest and go into myself and raise my frequency. And all of a sudden I didn't put anything out there and people are contacting me. And what this shows me, it doesn't matter as much about content or not content. 
you know, or this strategy or that strategy. It, me, it matters that your heart is fully in it. You feel excited about doing it. And why I'm so excited about doing this is because I think it's not some, this isn't something that a lot of people teach about from a place of deep integrity and from a place of really thinking outside of the box. And that's what we're going to offer you in this. Um, so we'll say more, but I really want to open it up to the questions of the people who are here now. And yeah, maybe that'll help us to really paint a more clear picture. Yeah, sure. Um, let's see. Yeah, anybody has a question? I didn't have a otherwise. Just, yeah, cool. Yeah, go ahead. I just enjoyed that bit about the um, the chat, the AI really changing the future. I already had that like strong feeling because I work in tech, um, and just observing how um, the busy work, right, that a lot of people in tech uh, do that keep themselves occupied, is drastically changing, and how there's varying levels of awareness about its impact in the future some people are very aware and like oh yeah get ready and other people are like what is this what does this mean um but just that that um that hello about it creating a really good space for us to look at like what our um our true passion is you know what our intrinsic um um soul motivations are like that being our gold you know, that we can offer the world. And just like how the pandemic like created a lot of space for people to look within and like reassess and recalibrate, right? It's like strange medicine, like this chat GPT is also gonna like give us space to maybe like pursue our passions, you know? So I, I enjoyed that bit. Yeah, and, and I want to add something to that, um, which is my take on it, is that I also think it's really important that we bring our passion into how and why we might be using uh, something like chat uh, GPT or AI in general, because it just because it's there doesn't mean we have to use it. Uh, I actually thought about, and, and if I was passionate of, of going more after sort of the marketing business world, um, adding in the spirituality, uh, which I'm not, so I'm not going to, um, that, that's something I would want to to bring out there because just because it's there doesn't mean we have to use it. Like for example, um, my biggest passion right now is songwriting and getting my songs out there. And did it occur to me to use ChatGPT for ideas for songwriting? Yes. Am I going to use it? Absolutely not. Um, because I'm not passionate about it. I'm passionate about it for the art of it, uh, for the feeling it gives me finishing a song and getting the feedback. And if I got feedback from somebody from a song that I had chat GPT, right? It'd be like, uh, well, thanks. Uh, you know, uh, here's the PayPal button or whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just not, it's not why I'm doing it. And, and actually I, 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 I had this joke. I just wanted to share with, with, with chat GPT is that I asked it to write a poem for, um, uh, a, a man to his wife who said uh, or asked if she looked uh, big in a certain dress like it, it was funny and and it actually came up with a poem that it was even pretty good at some point but it would just be really stupid to use that <laughs> so um, I, I think it's an important point that AI gives us some absolutely incredible opportunities also for copying things um, and again, that's a very short-sighted uh, solution. Yeah, can you copy something really easy? And if you have more money for putting uh, to work on um, on ad spend online, yeah, you can outcompete a lot of people potentially. And then what? Why are you passionate about that? Where's the value in that? So yeah, it, it, it's cool that you brought that up because uh, I think it's very important that we need to realize that bringing the formula into how we use AI, that, that's a huge thing too. So thanks for bringing that out, Dominic. I think there's something key about that idea of, you know, thinking in terms of what COVID did to the world. Um, and and there's, there were tons of people with all of this free time. And then people recognize that they don't know what to do with their free time. And that's one of the greatest indicators that they, you know, they weren't really 
following the formula. And some people haven't really had that language or had that idea of following the formula, but everyone understands a little bit of following their heart. And the formula is a bit more specific, but I think the idea of, of some of these teachings is to put yourself in the shoes of some of these more extreme scenarios. Imagine they're playing out right now. If you had all the free time in the world, what would you do? If you had all the money in the world, what would you do? And that's one of the greatest indicators of where your passion really lies, because these mental limitations and constructs of what we have to do and what we um, are supposed to do as a good member of society is often the conditioning that stops us from letting that heart passion really kick in and guide us. So that's also a part of these teachings and these permission slips is how do we clear away that mental clutter to really be fully anchored in our knowing that is something somatic. It's like our when we talk about the passion, we also have to remember that our body physically knows and it's not something that's outside of us in the slightest. Um, there's actually another project that just kind of Point to, point to even though it would be months, even a year before it's ready. But I was in a channeling session the other day and the council were talking about ways of kind of making this pa this formula so passionate for people. Like he was thinking of very extreme examples, somebody who has disabilities, somebody who has this, somebody who's that, and getting to the, to the very minute detail of like, well, passion also means if you're just going to sit and flick through channels or, or things on your phone, are you sure that you're passionate? Are you sure that you're choosing the one that you're most passionate about? Because this formula is something that literally anyone can do, whether they're handicapped, whether they're elderly, whether they're in jail. You know, it's about in the moment you have choices, which choice and the way to execute that choice um, enhances that feeling of expansion that you viscerally feel at a somatic level in your heart and moving through your body. Um, and that's another way of putting it that's really helpful in helping people to actually get what this is and what it means. And as for this AI, I mean, there is that side of, you know, using it because you're supposed to or have to, or it makes it easier. But then, you know, I, I find a lot of passion in using the, the image generator. And mm, yeah. <laughs> before I had this image generating um, mid journey, I would often, you know, because because in a way, like we're in a role, some of us who are using social media to promote our message or to promote our sessions, like, okay, the algorithm says this is going to get more views if I put an image to it. But what if I just wrote something? And oftentimes I just write something and there's no image to it for off the bat. So I would find myself Googling things that were other people's images. Um, that had, you know, that kind of resembled what I wanted to share, but often were like, well, I was like, is this copyrighted? Is this something that, um, is this a good enough quality image? Um, is this something people have seen before? There are all these questions and it wasted so much more time that I literally just open up mid journey and I type in a couple of words and I get this image that um, isn't always perfect, but it, um, even whether or not people are like it, it allows my, my message to beat the algorithms just because it is an image now. And oftentimes they're super cool. Um, and so there's some, you know, there's some fear of AI in, in these communities and that's for good reason. And I mean, this comes through in the deeper works of the Pleiadian Council that there is some of these technological um, energies that are at play now that are resonant with the gray timeline. Um, there's remnants of the gray timeline that are alive, even though we're not on the gray timeline, thus by the fact that we are intermingling with these hybrid races. If you haven't heard any of these terms, um, look at more of the channeling videos. You can also ask us for the specific channeling videos where they talk about this or the specific parts of the book where they talk about this. Um, so anyway, you know, technology, these technologies can be used for good and they can be used for bad for the sake of simple terms. Um, but in the end, when we see from this perspective that in the new world, everyone innately has their needs met, there's no need to fear who or what the AI is taking the job of. 
um, because I'm not going to commission an artist for every single post to make on social media. It would be impossible. So yeah. this is a tool that can be really exciting and it can be a tool that can limit our creativity when it comes to other areas. And it's not like a black or white thing. Yeah, I just wanted oh, uh, to... Uh, yeah, go ahead, Dominic. I just also wanted to echo like what Dante was saying. I, I think it's interesting about that great timeline. Um, I felt that when you said that, but um, the what, what came up in me is that we're just being presented with the, the choices that they had so that yeah. we can make uh, alternate decisions. But um, there was no way for us to like... Um, resolve that karma loop if we never had the choice. Um, so it would eventually come up and we would then be presented to make a decision with the heart. But um, the other thing I've been working on personally with my wealth and abundance is like, I'll wake up in the morning, I'll say, I'll ask, you know, infinite intelligence, what's the belief system that I have going right now that like is blocking my, my, my wealth, my, my flow. Right, and I'll get uh, an answer, and then I'm um, I'm still working on exactly what to do with that answer. Right, how to practically go and dissolve that belief system in the best way. So that's one of the things I'm hoping just to get um, from the Pleiadian perspective. You know, the brass tacks um, mechanics of 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 how they're presenting to do that. So that's that's something I'm looking forward to. Yeah, one one thing that I really love that they did, and um, and I'll give myself a little bit uh, a pat on the back for getting very close to it, is that, uh, and I think I actually asked them directly if you can use affirmations as a diagnostic tool, because most people want to use affirmation as a sort of a magic pill, uh, if you will, or a shortcut, and and I asked them directly. Uh, whether uh, if you use affirmations on something that you don't believe, if that has any potential dangerous effect. And they said, well, the only danger is that you're wasting your time. <laughs> and then they talked about how you can exactly use affirmations as, as a diagnostic tool of using them and then tap into where and, and what you feel in, in your body and take it from there. And so that, that's also why I think uh, one of the, I'd say if I had to pick one, one of all the probably hundreds of questions I asked them, it was what did they see as the five most important beliefs that we can have that have the potential of overriding all limiting or negative stuff. And they came up with five things. And then my suggestion, which they then elaborated on was a really good idea, was to use these five beliefs as affirmations and then take in whatever thought pops up uh that and and where you feel it in your body and then work from that and then replacing it with the opposite belief so it's absolutely something that's covered and that's also something that i'm super passionate about because it's part of what i work with personally uh with clients for years and years and now i have this extra perspective of uh of uh, of doing it and i just yeah one of the things that um that I've used that I was very curious with uh, their feedback on is that one of the things I've done with clients is with uh, a belief is asking people on a scale from zero to 10, um, how true or how much do you resonate with this thing, uh, with, with this belief or this affirmation? And let's say people say, well, may maybe a five. Uh, then the, the typical question would be, well, why don't you feel, uh, why, why didn't you pick a, a higher number? But what I do, I do, I do the opposite. I ask people, why didn't you choose a lower number? Because something really cool happens when you do that is that then they'll start to quote unquote defense or slash tap into the positives that are already there. And then once you get those, that's where you can go in and take permission slips like neurolinguistic programming uh, and uh, energy tapping and a bunch of other things um, and then enhance what's already there and then override the negative stuff and like and and it's funny because one of the things I'm going to do is that uh, I'm actually in the process of cleaning up all uh, the recordings just to make it professional um, but I am going to include sort of a not not a blooper reel but sort of a um uh, 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 a sequence of every time we were done where I would say to Dante, holy fuck, uh, 
<laughs> I said, oh my God, and oh, you're not going to believe this because I was so excited literally after every session, but especially when they affirmed how good idea that is to use that zero to 10 scale. And then they gave the, the method of how to use affirmations as a diagnostic tool. I, I said to Dante, you know what? Uh, we have something very, very unique. Trust me i actually said it twice and you'll hear it because i i will uh, release those audios they were so funny i laugh at myself when i listen back to it i say trust me trust me <laughs> <laughs> uh, and by the way what, one of the things i did uh, intentionally going into this is that i took my 20 plus years of experience in both fields marketing business as well as transformational stuff and i also i insisted with myself um, beforehand on also having the beginner's mindset that it wasn't a project of Michael getting all the answers that I wanted. I also wanted the answers on behalf of everybody else. So I allowed myself and sort of uh, put my ego to the side. And um, and I also dared asking the, the beginner's questions as well. I just wanted to share that because it, it was a big challenge for me to do, but uh, I, I think it worked out really well. Any other um, feedback or questions from uh, some of uh, the other people on, on the call? Let's go into that now. Going once. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, le let me ask. <laughs> So let, let me ask uh, you, Dante. Like, what was was there like? What was one of the, if not the most uh, important thing for you that, or maybe the the thing that surprised you the most of of everything that uh, that came through in in those six sessions? I think what you were just talking about is probably like the what's most useful, what will be most useful for people is to really like sit with those five beliefs and do that practice of feeling where they have the resistance and, you know, having that support to transform them and use the many strategies that are there of how to work with a belief and transform it. Um, I think that's really important. And I think that there's a lot there in terms of, you know, beyond doing those practices, I think, because that comes towards the end of material, like a lot of these beliefs will just shift in that process of working with the first couple chapters and seeing how these new uh, angles that they give are something that can really break patterns quickly. Uh, It's pretty late here. I'm getting a little tired. I'm fading out. Yeah, no, no Happy worries. to answer questions, but it's like beyond yeah. that, my mind's getting blank. Yeah. So, so let's just see if there's any questions. Otherwise, uh, I can go into uh, the more specific details of uh, of what's going to happen and 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 what the opportunity is. So, anyone else got questions? Or you, Dominic? All right, so what, one of the other things we haven't touched upon yet, uh, which um, I'm excited about adding to uh, the program for those who wants to be in the four to six week program is that um, I want to basically be 100% available for doing Q&A &A and brainstorm on actual specifics of either uh, your existing business or business idea, or even uh, I thought about, and, and this is not 100% uh, confirmed yet, but uh, I feel like reaching out to my network and find one or two uh, people who um, can cover some different ways of, of making money online that's sort of uh, not uh, too demanding uh, time-wise, but just like opportunities that are present right now. Maybe they're not like your biggest passions, but it's something that potentially can give you some uh, extra uh, income. And so something that, that's also very important that the Pleadians mentioned um, is that it, it, it 
usually does take some type of action. Uh, like the, this is not a program for setting down, uh, and I'm really sorry to say this, it's not for just setting down, closing your eyes, meditating until you're blue in the face, and then all of a sudden um, the, somebody is, is on the door uh, with a big fat check uh, or lottery uh, winnings, even though you didn't actually play the lottery or whatever. Uh, this is actually about doing something. So, uh, so that's why I'm excited about adding that into it is uh, brainstorming ideas um, and uh, for current or future business ideas that you have, because that, that, that needs to be a way to get the money in. Uh, it absolutely can happen that it comes out of nowhere, but relying on it is a little bit tricky. So you want to watch out for that. Yeah, you want to mention something? That, that I had an experience of this, like this was like six years ago, or maybe seven, I think seven, seven is the number that's coming. Um, so I was like so broke, um, but I had like invested in like a thousand dollars worth of particular crystal that I was all about at the time. And I was consigning them at this shop. And I think it was like this day where I had like $10 left or something. So I went and I sat underneath a crystal pyramid. There was a meditation center in town where they had their garden open with their, there was some crystal, it's metal. But I was saying these words, I am abundance. I am I am a lot of things. I did a couple, but I just sat and, and, you know, the, so how affirmations really work is that you focus on the emotion as well as the word. So I knew that already at the time, as I'd done a bit of this work already, then I was saying those words, I am abundance. And I focused on the feeling of abundance. And then after doing that, I, the thought came, I need to go to the consignment shop and see if I've sold any crystals. And I went there and I didn't sell any crystals, but there were these two uh, Swedish ladies in the store and they were looking all around and they were also metaphysical channeling people. And I talked to them a little bit and then I was like, hey, um, I have these special crystals here. And they looked at them for a minute or two and they were like, oh, I want this one and I want that one. They bought that one they didn't buy the smallest ones but this is just a perfect example of um you know yes the magic tools you do play a big role but then they inspire the action so it was that combination mm. of them that in the moment i hadn't sold any crystals but by doing this permission slip i got an inspiration in the moment that said right now go to the consignment store and what that brought was like a hundred dollars in a moment that i had uh, next to nothing and so it's that it's always this both kind of a thing that we want to accelerate our energy frequency by doing the permission slips and finding our passion and letting our energy rise and then that should inspire action always and you'd be so surprised how these little actions that you just feel like are the most high vibe thing for you to do or what your heart's calling you to do lead you to what you need always. Yeah. And by the way, one of the things that, that I'm, I'm really, cause I, I wasn't sure if I was going to ask it, but I did anyway, is that I asked them uh, if they would read into the energy behind that when I used to play poker uh, back in the days, that two of the times where I won a major tournament, was when I in advance said that, okay, I'm going to invest, I think it was 10 bucks each time in the tournament, that if I win it, then I'm going to see the Rolling Stones, which are like my fucking heroes. I, I love Rolling Stones. And I was going to, I would have enough money to go and see them uh, in another country on their tour. Um, and so I asked the Pleiadians, like, what, what's the energy behind that I won those two? And one of the things they said was the fact that, that because I had that passion, I was tapping into, um, to, like the, the opportunity and I was tapping into uh, the attractive fields. Um, I don't remember exactly how, how, how they phrased it, but the, it, it also, it, it stabilized my vibration on such a high level that it, it wasn't a given that I won, but it was a, a large contributing factor to it. So yeah, like you said, there needs to be both. And had I played like an absolute idiot, I probably wouldn't have won. And I probably wasn't the best player in those tournaments either. But because I had that passion and uh, and I took the opportunity and I was so focused because of, of the why behind it uh, that allowed me to win. I thought it was funny because most people think like, oh, gambling, that's so unspiritual and it doesn't have to be. 
when you see it as a game when you're not attached to it and then you know i think the the conclusion of these materials is coming to see life as a game when you take the pressure off yourself and when you recognize that you know, it, it's a game of chance, but what is chance, but something that's determined synchronistically by our frequency, we get to have more fun with it. And the more fun we have with it, the better odds we have at winning. So yeah, there's a lot to uncover and we could talk forever, but and yeah, we'll we could so. <laughs> a lot over the program, but I want to kind of wrap it up now. One last chance for questions. Okay. Once, twice, gone. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, this program is going to launch in maybe two weeks to a month, and we'll have four to six weeks of live calls um, for those who are interested in that. But the package of the six recorded sessions and the transcripts and then some extra recorded sessions that are meditations and permission slips to be able to apply the teachings will be available. So the materials alone will be about $125. And then the four to six week program is $278. And that includes the access to us via a chat box, um, like a WhatsApp or something of that nature, where we can chat a little bit with the questions that you have as follow up between calls and we'll be there for you in the calls to both channel and answer the questions that come up for you and go through these permission slips live. And if you haven't been through a transformation container of any nature, it's something that I highly recommend because as there's this, both in you know, the privacy of knowing that it's a closed container, um, it allows for that intimacy to build and it gives you that chance to really experience um, transformative vulnerability in the area of where you have resistance in your beliefs. And it's also really fun. Um, so we're going to be launching this quite soon for those who are interested and um, the date will be more specific once some people are signed up. And um, we don't have the materials quite ready to release now, but once we pick, pick a date or something, maybe in, two, three weeks, um, even once you sign up, you'll get the materials and you'll be able to start working through them before we really go through the program. Yeah, the because we, 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 all, yeah, we also want to get people uh, just a chance to go through some of it uh, before we start the program. Um, so, so we really can go deep um, once we get going. Because like you said, like one of the reasons why we're doing this is that not only are we excited about it, but we're really, really excited about uh, getting some potential case stories for the next time that we're going to run the program. And like, at least for now, the idea is also turning it into a book uh, that could be next year. Who knows? Um, the most important thing is that we want to go on a journey ourselves and implement it. And we want to have some cool people along where we can be of uh, assistance to the best of our ability. Uh, driven by our passion and um, and and see what we can create or maybe even uh, co-create. Um, who knows? And one thing I want to uh, add in that that's also like uh, in alignment with what you said is that one of the experience I had uh, attending high level masterminds where I paid 10 and 15 and sixteen thousand dollars to attend is that I basically attended those masterminds to get my questions answered by the guru, by the leader of the mastermind. And that was the big value for me. What I didn't realize is that the completely and, and bigger um, value was actually listening to the other participants in the mastermind, asking their questions with their businesses and their examples, because that was questions and things that popped up that I could not have thought of myself. So that there's just a tremendous power in being part of a group like that. And that's also why the, I'm not offering this anymore because I'm, I'm not passionate about business in general uh, anymore. I'm focusing on the, on, on the spiritual stuff, the transformation stuff, as well as my music. So I, I don't offer this anymore. Uh, and uh, I want to do it here because it's still fun. And uh, I can't wait to do it in this context where it's added in with, with all the beliefs and all the material that, uh, that came through uh, from the Pleiadians. Can I ask a couple questions? Yeah. 
So yeah. it's um it's uh, 125 for the video series and then 278 for like the extended kind of a one to one help. Is that right? So 403 total. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. okay. And when were you thinking to have the sessions? Would it be on the weekends or is that still to be determined? Uh, we will probably ask um, uh, the first people who signed up. Okay. And um, I'm interested, is there any way to have like a payment plan? I don't know if I have 403 right off top, but I could like pay an install installment. Is that a yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah, we can definitely do a payment plan. That's all my questions, thank you. Cool. So thanks, Dominic. Uh, looking forward to having you part of it. Yeah, so I, I think we've covered everything. Uh, the, the final thing I want to mention is, uh, is that I was so blown away by what they said in the very last session is that um, I literally heard this when I was a kid that like, money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, yeah, I, I guess not. And guess what the Pleiadians said as a metaphor is that they say money do grow on trees and they expanded on that metaphor. And, and, and um, it, they, I mean, because one thing is that that uh, I, I love busting myths and, 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 and metaphors and old beliefs, but this was probably the one where if you had asked me uh, like a year ago, uh, is this ever going to be bust? I, no, no, no way. There's no way you can talk about money grows on trees. So when they mentioned that, I'm like, and I said to Dante afterward, Dante, this is just fucking golden. Um, so yeah, um, if, if this feels right for you, uh, and by the way, the, I just want to share something that uh, a conversation me and Dante had is that I said, look, we can do this two ways. We can just do it off the cuff and go with the flow, or I can prepare every single sales technique that I've ever learned and just throw the kitchen sink at people. And of course, we both knew that <laughs> that was not going to be an option. Uh, what I do want to mention, just as the final thing, is that uh, it doesn't mean that you can't use smart strategies for business. That and, and they mention even that as well, is that that's absolutely on the table. But the, the trick is to figure out what resonates with you. And that's one of the things that I really look forward to is that uh, whatever ideas or current business that you have, I want to throw the kitchen sink at, at you and then let you recognize what's uh, going to be right for you and what's going to fit in with your passion and where you're at. So that's why I think it's, it's such a cool uh, thing that me with my background and Dante with his abilities and his background, um, it, it's really a perfect fit because we cover all areas uh, regardless of where your specific needs are. So that's my last point of the evening. And I also want to say that it isn't just about marketing. Like that's one of the added bonuses. And I think a lot of people who are drawn to this are going to be people who are in some way, you know, already offering something or want to step more into offering something. But the materials themselves is also for changing our attitude about money that can benefit anyone, whether they have a more entrepreneurial role in life or whether they are just somebody who is wanting to feel more abundant and experience more abundance and have a better relationship with money and make more money by changing your frequency and applying the work, the work in, in these materials, it will definitely have that impact. And then the added bonus of all of these things that Michael knows that I am so curious about because I don't know what's, what's in there and all of that you've experienced in so many years is really great for people who have that more entrepreneurial interest. And it's, yeah, it's something that, many people will benefit from and I'm really looking forward to sharing with you. And just one, one final point on, on that note is that, yeah, if, if, if somebody has a job and they want to continue with that, that's absolutely fine. Um, and one of the things they also mentioned is, uh, and I don't think they mentioned it as directly, uh, but they really, what they talked about was ultimately also about leadership and self-leadership. And that's one of the things that if you have a job, that's one of the things that's going to make you keep the job as a lot of jobs are going to go into AI territory. Um, and definitely getting into getting a raise territory is that the more somebody in a job, uh, whether it's called for or not, think and acts like a leader, uh, the more valuable they're going to be. And um, 
yeah, so it, it's definitely for everybody. Uh, it's not just for people who are interested in business. Yeah. I think that's a great wrap for now. So yeah. thanks so much for taking the time to watch this or be here today. Really appreciate everybody. And let us know if you have any questions, you can shoot me an email and I will help you sign up when you're ready and look forward to share that journey with you. All right. Thank you, Dante. And uh, thanks to everybody who's watching and um, hopefully talk soon.